This is an unusual case of an IOL that's dislocated actually in the bag. I did the initial cataract surgery several weeks before this. Um, there was no posterior capsular tear or anterior capsular rent uh, during the uh, case, but at the end of the case the IOL did not center extremely well. Um, we tried glasses uh, for this patient, but she was very bothered. Um, you can see that the edge of the optic almost splits her pupil, and uh, she was very symptomatic from this dislocation of the IOL. So we're going to recenter the IOL. We have lots of bag to, to work with, um, so that makes it easier. Um, we're reopening the main incision here, and basically we're going to do a generous uh, visco dissection of the lens from the bag. We're trying to free up the lens uh, out of the bag. At this location you can see the anterior capsule is actually fused to the posterior capsule and right there you can see that we're able to put enough viscoelastic in there to uh, dissect that uh, open. That's really key for recentering this because the lens has got to go into that uh, bag there uh, and um, we would have had to probably exchange the IOL if we weren't able to break up that adhesion between the anterior capsule and the posterior capsule. Here we've uh, basically got the lens free from the bag, so we're just using the uh, viscoelastic cannula to um, push on the haptic optic junction and to try to rotate uh, the uh, lens around just to see the other haptic. Here we're going to use a Sinsky hook to inspect the uh, haptic that was uh, dislocated nasally. Uh, we want to make sure that the haptic isn't actually broken off. I was pretty sure it wasn't because I did the primary surgery, uh, but still didn't have a great reason why the lens was so dislocated inside the bag. Um, and you can see there that the haptic is totally fine. Here you can see that we basically have the lens where we want it. It's very well centered. It's in the bag. I've inspected the posterior capsule. It's still completely intact, so now I'm going to remove the viscoelastic. I apologize, the view is a little bit blurry on this uh, section, but right there you can see that there's some vitreous that comes into the INA tip. So we stop uh, vacuuming. We try to get um, the vitreous out of the INA tip. You don't want to pull on the vitreous there. You may cause some retinal traction. I'm still trying to remove the viscoelastic, and there's the vitreous again. So it looks like I'm pulling on it, but I'm actually just trying to get my INA tip back. I was not vacuuming at that point. And now I can see that this is going to be kind of a, a persistent problem of pulling on the vitreous if I continue to um, try to remove every bit of viscoelastic. So I'm going to go ahead and hydrate the wound here, um, and then we're going to start checking it with a wet cell. So right now I'm just assessing uh, how much vitreous I have and um, whether I need to do an anterior vitrectomy or not. Um, there's obviously vitreous there nasally at the equator, but it's not really close to the center of the eye. Um, and so I'm hydrating the wounds and um, repeatedly checking them with a wet cell to see if there's any vitreous in the wounds. There's not, I can't see any other vitreous except for that strand there nasally, so I'm gonna put in myocol and bring the pupil down. Um, this helps check for a peaked pupil. Um, another option that I didn't do on this case that I could have is to stain with triessence to be able to see the vitreous. Um, but here I'm just checking to make sure that my wounds are intact um, and that there's no vitreous at the wounds. You can see a nice round uh, pupil and you can barely see uh, any vitreous there. It's all behind the iris. Um, at the equator of the eye. 
And uh, I decided not to do an anterior vitrectomy in this case. Um, it's probably changed over the years as I've uh, been in private practice longer. I think if it's uh, equatorial vitreous, a lot of times you can get away with that without having to do a anterior vitrectomy. Here I'm just putting in a generous amount of Vigamox into the anterior chamber. And in this case, the patient did not require any sutures. I checked the wounds multiple times, and this concludes my case. Thank you.